morning everyone oh sorry <laughs> good afternoon everyone oh good evening everyone how's everybody <clears throat> yeah i'm fasting today so that's why you know the mind is somewhere else yeah. it's on food today. <clears throat> so uh how's everybody venkatesh how are you you're not feeling well uh, why what's wrong what happened huh cold oh it's the weather the change in the weather see that's why i'm wearing these warm jackets jacket to keep me warm to keep me protected from the cold i think that's what you should do as a do you have a good heater at home to keep you protected from cold as well but sometimes it happens when you when you when you are driving or you're or using your ac all the time you know with higher temperatures and then you you know that there's a temperature difference when you come out of your car. That's when you have more chances of catching the cold. In summers as well, your, your car is on AC roughly around 11, 12 degrees, but then outside it's really hot, 80 degrees. More chances of catching cold. And plus, is country may in Australia, Melbourne particularly, uh, viral is very viral infection is very common, particularly in winters. So you have to take care of yourselves. Otherwise. Um, uh, People around you will also have this infection. So if you protect yourself, you're protecting others too. Yeah. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Those people who have joined us online. Um, this is the live uh, grammar class. We conduct every day, 5 to 6 p.m. And we go through some new rules. We discuss a lot of things. And we go through basically grammar and make it a little bit more easier for you guys to understand this and not only just understand but uh, apply it uh, in your day-to-day -day life so it's going to be beneficial for you guys as well even if you leave uh, us because your target is PT inshallah hopefully this will be beneficial for your uh, Pearson's test as well particularly your reading and writing I, I'm very vocal about it I've mentioned it before as well these grammar rules and um, there is a there is a beautiful book uh, that I always recommend. Uh, but in fact, we always recommend it to students, and uh, most of them know the name but haven't gone through this book. the The author is Raymond Murphy. R A Y M O N D. R A Y M O N D. Raymond Murphy. M U R P H Y. There are three levels of this book: beginner edition intermediate version and then you have your um what do you call it advanced version and uh, we recommend uh, to go through intermediate uh, version could be any edition first edition second edition third or fourth doesn't matter but intermediate version is going to be helpful for you so they have got all those clauses all those noun phrases verbs auxiliaries tenses models Infinitives, participles, qualifiers, adjectives, adverbs, parts of speech, everything has been elaborated in detail and in a very easy way. So like we had in our school grammar, remember when we had our school days, we had those exercises along with diagrams and then with those, some, with those, with those rules and diagrams like car and driving, something like this. And on the right hand side, we had some rules yeah, and some exercises to do. So just like that. So it has got 125 units. So even if you solve first 50 during the course of three week cycle that you have here with us, you should be okay in the exam. So this is like an added reference for you as a reference book for you to practice grammar. Most of the rules that we discuss, of course, they come from Raymond Murphy as well. And uh, most grammarians uh, use this particular book, Raymond Murphy, very easy, beneficial for both IELTS and Pearson's test, PT. So yesterday we did a couple of rules, uh, well actually quite a few. Uh, today we are going to start from where we stopped yesterday. What was my last sentence yesterday? Now let me ask, uh, Venkatesh wasn't present, Jadip was present and Raj, Raj was present yesterday. Uh, Raj, let me ask uh, you this question very quickly. Now, stealing is a crime, isn't it? Yeah. So if you are sentenced, yeah, if they give you a sentence or you're penalized for it, would you say I was charged for stealing or would you say I was charged with stealing? I was charged with stealing. I was char he was charged with murder. He was charged with, could be, it could be anything. For example, you're charged with uh, molestation. 
could be anything, yeah? So any particular crime that you do, for corruption, you were charged with or something like this. So charged, when you give a sentence, it always comes with a preposition and the preposition is with. We did it yesterday. Now let's come to today's uh, grammar rule. Now, let me let me actually write a simple sentence so that you can look at, look, look at it here. So let me write it uh, on the doc here. <clears throat> So let's write number one. Is it visible? I think, yeah, it's visible. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Do you look at the sentence? What does the sentence say? The rice of India is finer than china do you know do you know this word that i've used here i've used a word called fine finer yeah um and first things first when you say how are you how do you respond i am fine that fine is different fine that is about your well-being yeah but when i say something is fine see have you heard of this something like this fine particles yeah fine particles fine details Fine particles, Mane, they are, uh, when you say fine particles, it actually means those particles are detailed. I mean, you can see them, yeah? They are, they are clean, they are clear, yeah? So that's called fine, fine particles. Mane, in this particular sentence, whose rice, whose country's rice, am I thinking that it is more superior? India. So in terms of these two countries that I've used here, India and China, I think the rice in India is more superior, yeah? It's more superior than China. Now, in this particular sentence, there is a slight mistake. I just want you to pick that up, and I'm pretty sure you, you can pick this mistake. Bankatesh, can you give it a try, yeah? No. Okay, tell me here, first of all, are we doing a comparison here? Yes or no? Of course, there's a comparison here. Comparison is between what? Is it between, bet comparison is always done between two things. That's why they use the word than, isn't it? So than is used with a comparison. And first of all, before I come to this comparison part, before I talk about this comparison part, before that, even before that, one important thing, whenever you use word than, you always use comparative terms. There are, two, there are three levels, yeah? Level one is called positive. Level two, comparative. Level three, superlative, yeah? We did it in, uh, in our school grammar. Positive, comparative, superlative. Positive, good. Comparative, better. Superlative, best. Good, better, best. Or do we say better? -er? We never say better, -er, yeah? So good, better, best. Go positive, competitive, and superlative. How about this? When you say something like this, you say um, beautiful, positive. Can I say here something else? Can I say beautiful -er and beautiful -est? I'd say beautiful, positive, more beautiful, comparative, most beautiful, superlative. More, 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 uh, more, and most. So positive, comparative, and superlative. But all those terms that I have used here, positive, comparative, superlative, uh, in terms of these three, positive, comparative, suppose good, better, best, then will be always used with, always used with comparative terms. Is it clear? So, mane, kaise bolenge? Better than. Can I say good than? Can I say he's good than? I can't say. Can I say he's best than? I can't say. I'll always have to use a competitive term. Is it clear? Did you understand this one? Now, in this case scenario, when I say something like this, when I say um, dark, dark is positive. Make it make it competitive. How can I say? Will I say more dark? Darker. Dark? Darker. And the superlative term is? Darkest. Bright. Brighter. And the superlative term is? Brightest. Can I say brightest than? I can't. Can I say bright than? I can't. I have to say comparative term. And what is the comparative term? Brighter. Yeah. 
comparative brighter superlative brightest so we'll, i will use comparative term brighter than darker than smarter than not smartest than smarter than okay is it clear did you understand this one so, so far so good positive comparative superlative and what did i what did i do in this sentence what did i write here i said finest or finer i used finer so so far it looks from that perspective the sentence looks okay finer than now tell me what am i comparing here am i comparing the countries or am i comparing the rice do you know what am i comparing i'm comparing rice with the country i'm saying the rice is finer than china can i compare two two things which are totally different from each other i can't but so this sentence is 100 percent wrong because whenever you make comparison it has to be between similar things is it clear how can i correct this sentence who can tell me yeah of course let's correct it here so let's correct it and write something like this the rice of india is finer than the rice of china yeah but natives have got a different way of writing this sentence and that's what you need to learn in this today's grammar rule and what is that of course you're right the rice of india is finer than the rice of china looks okay but natives what do they do is they replace this entire thing the rice thing again they don't repeat it they don't. again they don't exactly that's that's what they replace it with is it clear the rice of india is finer than that of china is it clear did you understand this one now how about this one uh the training in australia is different than that of england is it clear i don't have to repeat the training one more time is it clear something like this the technology in iphone is better than that of samsung so i don't have to repeat technology again is it clear suppose your jacket and my jacket your jacket is more expensive i'll say venkatesh's jacket is more expensive than that of zishan is it clear did you see my point now in this particular case scenario we're comparing two similar things so let me put it here number one is 100 percent wrong and number two is right or correct let's write it here is it clear guys yeah so this is how we write these sentences now, if you've understood this rule, I have a sentence for you. And you have to tell me what do you think about this sentence, yeah? If you've understood it. Mostly, I think you understood it, yeah? So, let's write it here. Akshay, yeah? Okay. So, Akshay, you tell me. I'm going to write a sentence here first and you tell me, yeah? <clears throat> the sentence says, Schools of England, yeah, are... Less crowded than that of than that of Australia. Can you read the sentence, Akshay, quickly? Tell me what does it say? Not these schools, of, those schools. Do, do you know the difference between D and the? You don't know the difference the, in the pronunciation. D is always used with the noun if the letters are all vowels. If the letters, if the first letter of the word is a vowel letter. They say India. I'll say, of course, you can't say the, the India because it's grammatically wrong. So, for example, if I say independent, so I'll say the independent. Yeah. But if it starts with a consonant, you say the. Can I say the rise or the rise? The rise. Okay. The rise because R is not a vowel letter. Wall letter, someone can know wall letter. You know wall letters, yeah? A E I O U. We did it. So whenever we say something like this, can I say the umbrella or the umbrella? I'd say the umbrella. But if the first letter is a consonant, you'll say the the chair, the chair, the chair, yeah? Something like this. So how do you how do you pronounce this? 
the exactly so read it the schools of india are less in india nahi england, england are less crowded than that of australia is this sentence right or wrong based on the grammar rule we just did above in the first sentence schools yes maybe the school oh what if i'm talking about a lot of schools I'm saying the lot of schools in england i'm not talking about one school i'm talking about a lot of schools jadeep what do you think should be right isn't it because we just did the sentence earlier on i said oh, we are comparing two two things here one thing is compared with another but if you know me it should be wrong <laughs> why is it wrong are lesser crowded now understand this thing why is this sentence wrong um do you know that there here than that of australia of course it's it's not 100% wrong you can say that but you can also say this is it clear because the school is plural so how can we how can you rephrase it the schools of so that is not wrong here but you can also say those so how can we how can we how can we rephrase it the schools of england are less crowded than those of australia and do you know what what is those used with or where is where do we use this word this, this pronoun those is it used with something uh, schools we can count it isn't it can i change my first sentence by saying that the rice of india is finer than those of china can i say those of why can't i say those of china here because rice is an uncountable noun so here this sentence would be 100% wrong if i replace that with those of china is it clear so this sentence would be right so that of china how about if i change in the next one that to those will this sentence be right or wrong can we count schools of course we can count schools so we can use those with it is it clear so with countables in this sentence we can say that of or we can also say those of but with uncountables you can never say those of you will always use that of is it for example paint can we can we count paint paint is like the whole liquid yeah so you can't count it you can't say i've got 2.5 paints in my pocket it doesn't make sense so i'll say the paint the paint used in my home is more expensive than that of yeah so i can't i can't say here than those of is it clear you can understand this rule so this is how we do now let me write here so the rule is basically let me write it at the top yeah so the comparison comparison has to be between two similar things yeah and then we learned it we learned this rule would you ever make a mistake so suppose for example if i ask this to jadeep jadeep you tell me yeah uh can you say something like this my farm is larger than her yeah can i say something like this what am i comparing here i'm comparing a person with the farm it's not similar is it so i'll say then that of hers is it clear did you see my point here so then that of but you cannot say than her is it clear so do we have any doubts here in this particular yeah, raj go ahead yeah Le but, but here here lesser lesser then i don't need crowded if i say lesser then i don't need crowded did you see my point i'm already using crowded here yeah you see my point there's, there's already a comparison here or i would have said i can't say less than i would have say if i if, if there was no crowded i would say lesser than is it clear if i say lesser the meaning is different right yeah so it's like yeah exactly yeah now here we are we're talking about less crowded in terms of the number yeah now let's come to number 2 oh i love this one trust me oh let me write it here and let's see how many of you can get it right my doctor how many of you do you know that how many of you have heard of this phrase called an apple a day keeps a doctor away what does it mean that if you if you eat an apple every day you don't need to you'll always be healthy isn't it you'll always be healthy i don't know how 
much truth lies in this particular statement, but hopefully it is true, yeah? Because it has a fiber. It has some fiber? Yeah. yeah, that's why, yeah? Because of fiber. Because of fiber, yeah. A lot of fruits yeah. have fiber. Oh, m mostly all fruits have got fiber, like orange, banana, all the uh, apple has got fiber too. So yeah. it's so it's like maybe from that perspective, yeah? So how about this? If I say my doctor suggested me to eat an apple, eat an oh, apply, oh sorry, eat an apple, what am I doing every day? My doctor suggested me to eat an apple every day, yeah? So suppose if I go to the doctor and then the doctor goes like, okay, pet kharab hai, you got issues, yeah? Consume, eat apple regularly on a daily basis, yeah? So if I say my doctor suggested me to eat an apple every day, tell me. Let me ask this to Akshay. Akshay, do you think that there is something dodgy in this sentence? It looks good. How many think this sentence is right? Raise your hands. Or maybe this sentence is right, this, this sentence is a little advanced, so that's why it's right. Or some people think that there's a mistake. There is a mistake? What's a mistake here? Every day? What is a mistake with every day? Na, Venkatesh, Jadeep, you tell me. Instead of me, my doctor suggested to eat an apple every day. Mm. Eating an apple? Mm. Oh wow! Look at that. How about this? Can you can you uh, can you say the sentence again? My doctor suggested me eating an apple. My doctor suggested me eating an apple every day. Mm -mm, wrong. No. no. Forget about huh? Yeah. Eat an apple. My doctor suggested me eat an apple every day. Me eat an apple every day. We are using like my and me twice in a month. My and me twice in a Wow, you people are so creative. Trust me. You just make it up. You know, you think that, oh, oh let me do something here. Okay, this is right. Yeah. It's not creative. Ni, creative in nature. Yeah, we don't need this, this much this much creativity here. Now, forget about this sentence. Let me write, write, let me write another sentence and see how many of you can get it right. So, suppose I have a sentence like this. Yeah. So, it says, he... Pass for me. Yeah? He suggested. He suggested to open the door. Suggested to open a door. To open the door. Yeah. <clears throat> Tell me now. How about this one? Number two. He suggested to open the door. Forget about the first sentence. Think about second sentence. He suggested me. Venkatesh, you think it should be me here, yeah? He has to suggest someone, yeah? You're right. He has to suggest someone, yeah? So we need we need somebody here, isn't it? So we need we, he has to suggest someone. There is a particular rule for this particular word, suggest. And I want you to learn that today. And you will never, ever, inshallah, make a mistake with this rule ever again. When you write something like this. Now I'm going to type that here and then you're going to learn it. And what is that? Oh, before we uh, go through this one, guys, do you, do you how many, do you, uh, when you miss those grammar classes, do you actually go through this link at home sometimes when you, when you miss the classes, Venkatesh? Because I'm talk, particularly talking about you because you've missed the links, uh, a lot of them actually. Yeah. So you know that way you can find those links in that grammar, yeah? Okay, so let's write this uh, sentence here. Now, Suggest can always be, it will always be followed by verb plus ing. Is it clear? Now, yeah, just like consider. I'll come to consider. So, how about this? He suggested opening that door. Kalga. He suggested opening the door. Is it clear? Not to open the door. How can we make sentences like this? How about this? Yeah, my father. My father suggested, yeah, to play or playing. My father suggested playing the cricket, Graham, yeah, yeah, or playing cricket. My father suggested playing cricket. Could be playing, could be, uh, could be watching, could be helping, could be gaining, 
anything could be following yeah anything yeah could be following anything so my father suggested how about this if i change suggest with will suggest i will suggest the verb will be always in ing form i will suggest playing i will suggest swimming i have suggested gaming he has suggested the bus driver says suppose you are you, you are jumping you, you are boarding the bus yeah so uh, the bus driver goes can you quickly board the bus because i have to leave i'm already late yeah so the bus will, the bus driver will go, will go. Uh, i will say the bus driver suggested bo to board or boarding the bus driver suggested boarding the bus so what sort of structure did i use here first of all what did i use here yeah i i use the structure suggest followed by yeah suggest verb ing kaise yaad rakhenge suggest doing something yeah this is how i doing doing is a variable it could be anything yeah so just playing so just so just gaining so just helping so just watching yeah so suppose uh, i'm 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 wearing this jacket which is not good in color so you'd say uh, sir we suggest to change or changing changing this jacket is it clear so far so what is the structure so just doing something now how about this how can we change this sentence number 1 suggested me to eat how would we change this how can we change this so let's put it as a wrong sentence here in the bracket and let's write the correct one suggest the correct one will be suggest eating yeah so suggest eating yeah will be correct so my doctor suggested eating an apple every day is it clear suggest eating now what if i tell you guys let's copy this sentence and let's paste it at the bottom yeah now what if i tell you that i need to have somebody here i need to have a person the doctor will not suggest in the air he's going to talk to someone isn't it so you me my father or someone who else yeah so anyone else i need someone here yeah now you tell me here is this sentence right or wrong this sentence is wrong isn't it because we you already used to eat isn't it but i need to put somebody here at least that who this particular doctor is addressing is talking to in this case scenario can i write a sentence like this my my doctor suggested me eating an apple my doctor suggested me eating an apple because he has to talk to someone isn't it can't say it in english can i say my doctor suggested me eating an apple now before i jump into this before i jump into this and come up with the answer and tell you the answer straight away but before that i need all of you to tell me uh, when we have me whenever you use me do we always uh, can, can i say start my line or can i start my sentence by saying something like this uh me working very hard today can i say me working very hard today what do i start with i i have to start with i and then auxiliary obviously i am but i can't say me am working very hard today i'll have to say i am why because i is the subject and me is the object is it clear see my point did you understand this one so for example uh, what about this can i can i say something like this uh, them them are very good in carrom board can i say them are very good if you say them are very good then you don't just <laughs> to be here them are very good is wrong it should be they what is the difference between they and them they is subject and what is the object form of they them and then them will always come in the end and they will come in the beginning yeah so i talk to they or i talk to them i talk to them so them is the object form isn't it yeah so um look at i or look at me look at me because me is the object and whenever you are using the sentence and in a sentence you are using the word suggest is it clear suggest will never be followed by an object form is it clear so this is a rule for suggest and this is what grammarians prefer and this is what all native speakers use and that's what you need to learn here as well let me come back to the sentence and tell me us hisab se us when i when i when i say of when i speak of the subject form can i ever put me in the sentence i can never ever put me in the sentence what form of what what form of me do i need to put here object or subject subject and what is the subject form of me i and how can we rephrase the sentence 
let's write it my my doctor suggested yeah so let's write it my doctor suggested so so far so good yeah that my my doctor suggested that which is optional is it clear that is optional in this sentence yeah my father's my, sorry my doctor suggested that and then subject yeah and then yeah verb and verb will be always in present form is it clear present form present simple yeah simple present even if the word is in even if the first word suggest is in past isn't it is it not in the past my doctor suggested it's in the past but what form of verb did i say here you have to use the present form isn't it so how can we rephrase this sentence can you tell me let's rephrase it yeah my doctor suggested that is optional isn't it yeah so my doctor suggested that whether you put that or not doesn't matter it's optional even if you don't put that it's still okay yeah that i eat an apple every day so so every day two words every day is it clear so my doctor says so this sentence let's put it here sentence is 100 percent right so my doctor suggested that i eat an apple every day of course if i remove this app, if i if i remove this that yeah my my doctor suggested i eat an apple every day the sentence is still right because that is optional is it clear did you understand this one so my doctor suggested that bolo that na bolo the sentence is still 100 percent right did you understand this one so so far how many structures did we learn here let's let's highlight this suggest that subject plus verb so bold so this is oops so rule number one for suggest and rule number two for suggest so whether suggest is in the first form second form third form the actual verb what is the actual verb here what is the main verb here the main verb is eat it will never be eaten or it will never be ate it will always be eat is it clear which one it, it could be both it could be both whenever you're using a subject you have to use which rule first or second second yeah whenever there's no need to put in subject what do we use we will use first one ing i suggest watching movie i suggest gaining knowledge i suggest him can i say i suggest, I suggest him him kya hai? is it subject or object object i can't use object here object mana you can't use me you can't use them you can't use her you can't use him so let's write it that let's write that as well because you don't want to make mistakes here so to put suggest ke baad if you putting suggest him suggest her suggest them yeah suggest me the sentence will be 100 percent wrong is it clear so you never put object form after suggest how about this how about this i suggested to him right or wrong still sentence is wrong object object doesn't matter whether we have two in the sentence or not is it clear so suggest ke baad to put an object form is 100 percent wrong is it clear did you understand this? let me ask this quick, quick question to jedi tell me uh I suggest playing guitar on a daily basis, right or wrong? I suggest playing guitar, right or wrong? Right, 100% right, isn't it? I suggest uh, swimming on a regular basis, right or wrong? 100% right, isn't it? How about, how about you, Raj? Um, <clears throat> my mother suggests that I bring food every day. I bring food, yeah? So verb is, main verb is bring. Can I say, my, my mother suggests that I brought, can I say brought, what did I say? The verb has to always be in present form. Is it clear? Did you understand? So, so far, so good. We learned this rule, isn't it? No mistakes here. Yeah? All good? Now, if you have learned this rule, I have a quick quiz for you. Yeah? And I'm going to write a sentence here, and then you tell me, what do you think about this sentence? Yeah? So let's write it here. The sentence is... <clears throat>
Uh, DJ. Suggests that. Uh, DJ Jadeep, how do you spell your name? J I A. Oh, J A I. Okay. Our teacher suggests that Jadeep bring water for for us. Yeah. So easy peasy. Yeah. Our teacher suggests that Jadeep bring water for us tell me <clears throat> what do you think about it? if you just learned this rule tell me what do you think about this sentence we just learned two rules here you just have to tell me is it right or wrong think and tell me what does the mind say what does your mind say because it says it's wrong why is it wrong what does your mind say it's wrong. I mean, my mind saying our teacher suggests that uh, Jadeep brings water for us. Exactly. What do you think? It should be brings. Jadeep brings, isn't it? Normally, if I write a sentence like this, if I write a sentence like this, Jadeep bring water. Jadeep bring water for us. Of course, I can say Jadeep, full stop, please bring water for us. The sentence is okay. All right. But if I say something, Wo liye paani lata hai. Rose. So can I say, Jadi bring water for us every day? Jadip brings, isn't it? It should be Jadip brings water for us every day. But the sentence is not just, it doesn't start with Jadi brings water for us. The sentence starts with this. The sentence starts with the, the, the rule that I taught you. What is the rule? Suggest that, then subject. And that's what I was going to do. That was my grammar rule. Of course, all these rules were today, but this was like icing on this particular grammar rule. That even if your verb, yeah, is third person singular, yeah? So, he, what? Can we say he watch? We say he watches. We never say he watch. Because we for, for third person singular, we always use yes, eh, yes or S in the end, isn't it? But in this particular rule, this is called subjunctive, subjunctive verb. Subjunctive verb mane hota hai, it will always come with base form, in base form, yeah, all the time. Base forms all the time. So no matter whether you have first person singular, second person singular, third person singular, the verb that I have used here will always be in base form. And do you know what base form means? Without S or yes. ES, without ING, without ED, without S or ES all the time. So is this sentence from that particular rule right or wrong? The sentence is 100% right. But how odd does it look? It looks so odd that our teacher suggests that Jadi bring water for us. It doesn't make sense. It should be Jadi brings water. But that's what the rule is here with suggest. Is it clear? So the sentence is 100% right. Is it clear? So how would I say Jadi? How about this? Our teacher suggests that, yeah? Uh, our teacher suggests, uh, suggests that, um, um uh, yeah my my father suggests that uh, my sister um my, uh, my father suggests that my sister help me or helps me okay. help me not helps that's what i said your verb will be in base form although it's so odd isn't it but that's what the rule is that your verb is called subjunctive verbs it will always be in base form with this particular rule did you understand this one now can you copy all these three examples one by one the first one is, of course, suggest doing something. The second one is suggest that. That is optional. Subject plus verb, and verb will always be in base form. Write these two examples in your own way, guys. Huh? Is it what? What is command? What do you mean the command? 
Yeah. So it's like he suggested, he recommended, he made a recommendation. And what is the recommendation? Uh, I would recommend, yeah. So bring water for us, yeah. So to bring Nabolke, yeah. So bring water. Is it clear? Do you see my point? Uh, what, will you ever say now, uh, will you ever say something like this? My father suggested to me. 100% wrong. My father suggested to my father suggested to me uh, my father suggested to me to open the window. Now, my father suggested that I open the window. Is it clear? Go to Australia, yeah? So how can we say it? My father suggested to me to go to Australia. Now, my father suggested that I go to Australia. What if it is he? He goes or he go to Australia? He go to Australia, not goes. Yeah, in this case. This is like an exception. See my point? Although how rare is it? Oh, you don't want to he goes to Australia. But here, it's always based home. All the time in this particular rule. Did you understand this one? So to put to him, to her, to them, after suggest is 100% wrong. How about this now? How about this? How about this sentence? The sentence says... Tell me, what do you think about this? Tell me very quickly. My teacher suggested an idea. How about this? The sentence is so short, short and precise. My teacher suggested an idea. What, about, what do you think about this, uh, Venkatesh? This is what we are normally familiar with. This is the rule we are normally familiar with. And this is 100% right. What is the structure I, I'm using here? What sort of structure am I using here? Suggest, suggest, suggest something, simply, yeah? And what is that something? That something is the noun. Suggest a plan, suggest a theory, suggest an idea, suggest, a, uh, su su it could be anything, yeah? Suggest a strategy, could be anything, suggest something. So three structures here. Of course, if you put noun after suggest, the sentence will be 100%. Right. So let's write it here. Number three. So number three is the easiest out of all these three, isn't it? Number three is the easiest. So three structures. Let's remind it. Suggest something. Number two. Suggest that, which is optional, subject plus base form of verb. And what about third one? Suggest doing something. Is it clear? So three structures for suggest that we learned here today in this class. I hope you will never, ever forget these, rule, these rules for suggest. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure if I do it after a month, you'll be, you'll be the same. Suggest to me, suggest to him. 100% wrong, is it clear? Now, let's come to the next rule, number four. <clears throat> let's write it here. <clears throat> now, guys, tell me, have you heard of something like this? Now, let me ask this to, for example, when you ask when you suppose your friend or maybe your uh, wife, you know, she, you, you have to go to a party tonight. Yeah, so it's like a birthday party, and then it's your friend's birthday party, and you're taking your wife with you as well, of course. And then uh, she's already upset with you beforehand, and then you say that, um, Janu, oh, I shouldn't say this. <laughs> yeah, uh, can you please dash a smile on your face? Can you please? Can you please fake a smile? <laughs> Look at this. Can you please fake a smile? 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 You say fake a smile. You say fake a smile. But fake a smile. What is, this? What is the collocation with smile? Of course you can say fake a smile. It's a collocation. Put on a smile. yeah. Can you please put on a smile on your face? Or there is a zabardas word that you use without using put on. Can you please dash a smile? It starts with, oh, who said it? Oh, trust me, man, man in there, trust me. If I had, if I, if, I, if we had Imdad said he would definitely give you a Kit Kat for this one. Vera smile, W-E-A-R, Vera smile. It's not like wearing a jacket, yeah? So Vera smile, Vera smile is a collocation. It simply means put on a smile. That's not my grammar rule here. Of course, this is a, side side thing for you to learn wear a smile can you please wear a smile yeah so wear a smile put on a smile yeah? can you please smile simply wear on a wear a smile now how about this if i write a sentence now you got the background context yeah but let me write a sentence here and you tell me what you think about <clears throat> this sentence 
So what sort of collocation did I use here? Where are? Smile. Uh, actually, behind, actually, first, I always forget your name. I'm so sorry. Well, what's your name? Suchita, yeah? Suchita. Suchita, uh, can you read the sentence there that we have on a television here? Can you please read it? Read it? So, where are? Smile. Now tell me, Suchita. The sentence, although I've used this, where is small, the sentence is still wrong. Can you tell me why? Just think about it carefully and tell me. Mm -hmm. Complete it. Now, okay, I forgot your name. I've seen you uh, first time in my grammar session today. Why are you grammar class? Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Can't you make? Oh, but anyway, let's talk about it in the PT, PT session. Yeah, Pearson's there. Now tell me. Uh, I forgot your name. Because class, I forget your name. Huh? Jagdish. Jagdish, tell What is the mistake in this sentence? Say it. 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 So if I write a sentence like this, every, yeah, <clears throat> every time you will come to the class or every time you come to the class? Every time you come to the class, you, you will feel sleepy or you feel sleepy? How simple is this grammar rule? Why couldn't you pick a mistake here? You feel sleepy, yeah? And what sort of grammar rule did I use here? The word every time. Whenever you have this word in a sentence, 99.99% .99 of the time, you'll always use present simple tense in the sentence. It will never be followed with any other tense. Always simple, present. Is it clear? No matter how many clauses you have here. How many clauses did I have here? Two clauses, isn't it? Both of them will be in simple, present all the time. So is sentence number one right or wrong? Correct it. Kaise hoga? Every time you comes, yeah? Every time you come. So let's remove it. Every time you come to the class, you will wear a smile or you wear a smile? You wear a smile. Tum jab bhi class, Hindi mein kya hua? Tum jab bhi, sorry to use a little Hindi here. Tum jab bhi class mein aate ho, hamesha khile khile rehte ho. So, tum khile khile rehte ho. This is too poetic, too dramatic. So, tum jab bhi class mein aate ho, you are always happy. You always wear a smile, yeah? So something like this. So, what is the rule here? So let's write it. So every time will always be followed by simple present. So let's write it. Simple present. <clears throat> and every time, how many words? One word or two words? Two words. Every time will be always followed by simple present tense. Yeah, present simple. Yeah, simple present. Okay. Now. Let's come to number five. This one was simple. I thought you would be able to pick the mistake here, but you didn't. <clears throat> oh, I love this grammar rule. This one is really nice. Akshay, who is your favorite actor? Don't tell me it's Akshay Kumar. Uh, From India, Bollywood. Bollywood Salman Khan. Salman Khan? Okay. What was his last movie? Uh, his one coming in uh, Ramadan. Oh, no, 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 the, no, the, the, the pre what was his latest movie that was released? You have to think. That means you're not his fan. Nah, not like this, huh? Ekta Tiger? No, it wasn't Ekta Tiger. Ekta Tiger is a movie. Ekta Tiger. I know these these people make stupid titles. I don't understand this thing. Ekta Tiger. Well, there was a tiger, yeah. And then the next sequel is Tiger Zinda hai. 
माने टाइगर इज अलाइ एंड देन दर्ड सीकोल विल कम टाइगर एक्चुअली मैं मर गया था जिसी में पॉइंट these stupid i don't know who is the guy who's come up with these names very uh, you call it um can't even the name name should, the name should be at least proper you know like tiger 1 tiger 2 but it won't make sense tiger 1 tiger 2 tiger 3 <laughs> okay so let's write this sentence dash akshay is yeah <clears throat> handsome is a known fact dash akshay is handsome is a known fact akshay fill in the blanks indeed akshay is handsome of course you are 100% right mam nam bol ke faisal ye faisal tum se do din do din se aane rahe ho grammar session mein what is happening oh not in grammar session pity anyway keep coming to the class dash akshay of course you can say indeed akshay is handsome of course you can say in these indeed akshay is handsome then i don't need this part indeed can i say something like this uh indeed indeed i uh, indeed i love it is very good does it make sense indeed i love it is very good of course you can say indeed i love it full stop it is very good so i can't say i can't use indeed here because the sentence doesn't finish at handsome the sentence is still a continuation and let me tell you the answer for this one and let me help you with this now before giving you the answer for this particular blank let me write the same sentence here let, let me write, let me write another sentence here so that it will be a little bit more easier for you to understand what am i pointing here so what am i pointing to here let me double check first yeah so because <clears throat> i have to change the screens for online you know i am actually doing this because you can see this But then, when I'm giving explanation, I have to change the screen to my face. And then, when I'm typing something, I have to change my face to the screen as well. So constantly, that is happening in my mind as well at the same time for online students or watching us online. So I want to make sure that they are also watching the same screen that you guys are watching, not my face. And I'm typing something, they'll be looking at ah ah, how can I? You make one. So let's write it here. So tell me. <clears throat> uh, the sentence says something like this. Yeah. It is. It is obvious that, yeah, that PTE is easy. For example, yeah. Of course, it is easy. It is manageable. I'm saying, for example, it's manageable as long as, of course, you follow us blindly. Inshallah, you should get the scores. Now, you tell me. It is obvious that PTE is easy. What is easy? What is my subject here? What are they talking about here? they're talking about pt and they are saying that it is an it is like needless to say it's it's obvious yeah it is evident the same sentence can be written with dash pte is easy yeah dash dash pte is easy is very obvious do you know what does in this case sentence start with Now, to your surprise, the sentence will start with that. How old is that? How old is the sentence? Huh? Can I start something with that? That pity is easy is very obvious. This is the advanced structure. This is how natives start write the sentence. How do they rephrase this? Does it even make sense? It is obvious that pity is easy. Now, okay. How did they change the angle? That PT is easy is very obvious. Do you know what it means? It means that it means that it is a known fact that PT is easy. It is very obvious. So now, okay, it is a known fact that they start the sentence with that. That PT. Hindi me kya hua? Sorry to use a little Hindi here. Ki PT asan hai, sabko pata hai. The word, the sentence is beginning with ki. हिंदी में क्या हुआ कि पीटी आसान है ये बात सबको पता है इज इट क्लियर सो दैट पीटी इज इजी इज वेरी ऑब्वियस ना हाउ अबाउट दिस इफ आई से रणवीर सिंह या दैट रणवीर सिंह इज अ स्मार्ट एक्टर इज नोन टू ऑल इज इज अ पॉपुलर इज अ पॉपुलर ट्रूथ इज इट क्लियर दैट रणवीर सिंह इज एन एक्टर ऑल दो देंटेंस शुड हैव बीन 
it is a popular truth that Ranveer Singh is a is a good actor. Na bolke that Ranveer Singh is a good actor is a popular truth. Can you write both these examples, please? Everyone, please write it on your notebook. Everyone, the advanced structure that begins with that. Is it clear? Okay, how can I write this sentence? Yeah. So that iPhone is expensive is not hidden. Is it clear? Mani, everybody knows it. Something like this. Yeah. That grammar session is very productive, is known to all. Anything. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah, tell me. Um, I forgot your name. You can tell me. Generic say whether PT is easy is. Then you have to use or not with it. Whether that's a different case. That's a condition. Whether PT is easy or not is known to all. Then then you need or not. And that's a different case scenario. So the sentence, so Yahape, what is the structure? So let's write the structure here. The structure is the sentence is beginning with, let, let me bold it so that you it'll be a little easier for you. The sentence begins with that, and then you have your clause one, yeah, and then you have your comma clause clause two. Clause one, clause two. Okay. Huh? Of course, a comma is optional. Comma is optional. It's easier. Easy to. So you can still put a comma here. Yeah? So here. So suppose, um, where, where, where did that? So if I replace here, so I can say that Akshay is handsome, comma, is a known fact. Even if you don't put a comma, the sentence is still right. Is it clear? Now, let's come to the last grammar rule for today, and then we'll be done with this session. So the sentence is something like this. Now, let me write it here. <clears throat> oh, I love this example in terms of why, because traffic rules, you know, traffic rules, when we break traffic rules, we're most often, you know, often, it's, a, it's, it's a known fact that in this particular country, in, at one time, in your life here in Australia, you are bound to break one traffic rule. It will happen. It happens. Like nine out of ten people break traffic rules. So, if you're over speeding, yeah, so there's a good probability that you will break the traffic rules. Yeah, either speed limit or maybe you are actually you're crossing the speed limit or you're maybe crossing the signal or something like that. I've done so many times. I've been lucky. Trust me, I've jumped the signal so many times. Huh? No camera. I've been lucky. Trust me. Uh, but there are certain applications that tell you whether you have camera on the road or or not. You know, certain applications like like Waze, like Waze, it tells you whether you have some cameras there, or you, so you can you can you can be prepared, well prepared beforehand. But sometimes Waze is not accurate as well. Do you know that it says that there is a roadside accident? It says that, yeah, because other people update it, and then I keep on looking. There's nothing there on the road. Where's it tension? Huh? Uh, uh, before May, yeah, maybe it was cleared or something like that. If I'm not too far, if I'm too far, so something like this. Now, so I love those applications. Trust me, they're very beneficial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, guys, <clears throat> because I'm used to breaking signals, Toshim <laughs> Satan, in public. It's online, yeah. Uh, maybe um, in India, not here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> in the end, we don't care, you know. There are a lot of other things that break the traffic signal, not just us. It's not just us on the roads. Is it, is, is there are other things that are on the roads as well. There are cows, buffaloes that are breaking the signal anyway. So what can you do? Okay, now, <clears throat> but still, we love driving in India compared to here. Huh? We don't have no worries, no tension. So we're driving easily, you know. Don't you like driving in Turkey sometimes, compared to here? Yeah? Sometimes they're close. Yeah. Yeah, see, Nobody look at that. See. Exactly. Nobody can see. <laughs> now, let's come to the point here. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to write a, uh, a sentence here. So, let's write it here. And the sentence is <clears throat> let's say, Raj risked to break the traffic rules. To break Raj risked to break the traffic rules yesterday due to his due to his 
carelessness due to his carelessness or careless driving. Yeah? Now tell me. Raj risked to break uh, the traffic rules yesterday. <clears throat> Fessel, but oh, who said it? Maninda, look at that. Do you know these words? Risk is a word that whenever you put verb after it, the verb will always be in ing form all the time. Why do I pick and choose those words? Because it still looks right. These sentences look, these sentences look right. Risk to break. Yeah? But it's not right. Yeah? So the sentence would be, there are certain words like this that you, immediate, you immediately put verb ing after that. I'm not saying you say, Raj, risking the traffic rules. No, not risking. The verb after risk. Yeah? So here, whether it is risk or whether it is will risk or whether it is risked or whether it is have risk, no matter what form risk comes in, the verb that will immediately come after it will be in ing form. So risk doing something. Risk breaking the rules. Ri he risked yeah, getting punished. Get pun to get punished or getting punished? He risked getting punished. He has risk. Same. It'll be the same. Yeah, Getting punished. He has risk getting punished. Is it clear? So the verb, the, let me write all those words that those words will, will immediately be followed by verb plus ing. So risk is one of them. So risk, let me write another one. Consider, yeah? How do you write? Uh, I consider, I cons uh, 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 or I will consider, or I have considered any form consideration. I have, suppose, make, make an example. I have considered taking the classes on a daily basis. I would say, don't worry, Imdatsar is going to come. He's going to take this grammar. He said, huh? Matlab, sorry. Imdatsar is not going to I'm not going to come. So, Imdatsar is going to come. Don't worry. So, I so say, I have considered, yeah, sitting home, sitting idle, yeah? I have considered taking up a hobby, yeah, or something like this. So, consider ke bad verb will be in ing form. Is it, is it clear? See my point? So, risk, consider. And the last word is enjoy. So whenever you have word enjoy, yeah, in a sentence, it will immediately be followed by verb plus ing. I enjoy risk or risking. Oh, sorry, I intermixed both of these. You'll be like, ah, 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 okay, right. Of course, you can say I enjoy risking. Uh, I enjoy get or getting. I enjoy play or playing. I enjoy fail or failing. Uh, of course, you don't, yeah. So, <laughs> but failure is good as well. Trust me, bar bar bol. Sometimes failure is good as well. Yeah, of course, sometimes. Lagatar failure is not good. But failure ma makes you more successful, in fact. Yeah. Failure is a good teacher. It teaches you a lot of things that success can't teach. Success will make you arrogant. But failure will make you grounded or make you humble. One quality you're learning from failure that no other teacher can make you. When a person fails, you know what Koi teacher chadi se aukat yaad nahi dilata. But failure is a, you have to take it positively. I'm not saying fail, constantly fail. <laughs> I'm just saying failure, if you fail, maybe once or twice. Take it as an opportunity that you're learning something here. They take it like a learning opportunity. Silver lining is silver lining. Silver lining money kya to, to find positive. Have you heard of something like half glass, half full theory? Yeah? Half empty, half full. If, if, you, get, if you get a glass, you look, or you always look at the full part, yeah? So obviously, oh, I at least, I at least said the glass is at least full, yeah? Or something like that. No, no, like, oh, yeah, kya it may be so don't be a complaint box in your life. The positive. So I enjoy to swim or I enjoy swimming? I enjoy swimming. Is it clear? Did you understand this one? How about start? A start is an exception here. So let me write it here. Start will, follow, start will be followed with, by both. It will be followed by both. Start to do something. Can you write it please? All of them start to do something or start doing something start is an exception let me put it below here so start to do something or start start to work start, start to work on a daily basis yeah from tomorrow something like this or start working yeah how about how about this suppose we have this here barish yeah rain so it started to rain 100 percent right it started raining 100 percent right both of them are right so start is the only exception here start will be followed by both Start to do something or start doing something. Is it clear? 
I'm going to ask you tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, of course, because we're closed tomorrow day after, on Monday about some of the particularly suggest. I have some beautiful sentences in, the, in my mind. I'm going to ask you, and I'm 100% sure you'll successfully get it wrong. Unless and until you don't revise those grammar rules. Revision, ma grammar is like mathematics. You keep on revising, you go through, maintain the notebooks. Maintain notebooks for grammar. Very important. Is it clear, guys? Thank you very much. And the other branches, can we please disconnect? And those people who are who are watching us online, thank you very much. And uh, if you want to get notifications, uh, please uh, like, subscribe, and press the bell icon <laughs> to get the regular notifications. Yeah. Thank you so much, online people. Um, I'll see you on Monday. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. Um, other branches, can you please disconnect? Thank <laughs> you.